Countdown is done. That says countdown is done. Oh, we're already there. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, so Jason is with me on Zoom, but we're gonna have we're gonna have a pantomime session today, I think, because I don't hear him. So maybe we're gonna do I don't know sign language or hand signals or or. <laughs> something so let's let's bring him up on zoom and see if he's maybe watching the live stream video now it says he's connecting to audio uh let's see if that works uh let's see so i'm i'm gonna go catch up with uh chat there's been a lot of stuff going on in chat i think because of conversation mostly between Ken and Gary, uh, Omkar started with four subs to 1,000. Yeah, well, I will, I'll show a little bit about that first, and maybe I'll be doing that while Jason's trying to get his audio fixed. Uh, let's do an adjustment there. And uh, uh, Darren says, good to have you on a live today. Well, Darren, it's good to be alive today, so thank you for that. Um, and then Ken saying hello, four more to make a thousand. Yeah, well, I'm going to show you something about that because I made a thousand last night. Uh, Ken, did you review the third video? Yes, I did. Ken is working on a Windows based uh, screensaver to kind of try to emulate what's going on on my Mac. You've seen that sometimes. Uh, let's see some hellos back and forth 1800 to 6 p.m. for Darren. So he is Yeah, he's on I get I think in the United Kingdom I almost said wild kingdom. No <laughs> and uh, Ken other side of the world. It's 1140 in Charleston, Illinois can see hellos back and forth. How's your day? Uh, plane ride K uh, Gary is going on a plane ride today. Sounds fun. I'll be frantically searching for guidance for an idea I have on the screen saver, saver and asking if it's a private plane. I'm also seeing if I can copy and paste the effect I did last night with the new photos I added today as opposed to doing each one individually. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gary says his uh, daughter's boyfriend is in charge of the plane flight. How big has it dipped the wings? I was thinking of giving you my email. Cool. Sorry I'm bouncing between tabs until Doug gets going. And oh boy, there's a bunch more here. Send it private. Yada, yada. If I, let's see, on chat, I'm not sure, Gary. Probably not. I'll ask Doug if I can post mine here. I'm okay. Yes, I'm okay with that. And we no longer have private chat available, do we? No. YouTube took that away, along with pasting links. Dennis Paulson, hello to you too. Tavi Menor, hello. Uh, hi. Tavi, can you add sound with Google? Can you add some sound with Google? He said, oh, with the Google Earth. I, well, I can I can turn on my microphone and talk over it. I could add other sound to it. Yeah, I'm. What well, what sound would you suggest? I don't know. Um, yeah, let's see. Hellos, hellos, highs, highs. Darren only nine ninety six. Uh, JV, I can surprise subscribe with my other Google account to reach a thousand. Uh, don't 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 worry about that. We'll get there. Uh, here it is. Uh, can oh that's the. Uh, email address. So let me show you. Let me show you what's up. I actually reached a thousand last night. So I'm going to play a video that I recorded last night, and I'm going to I'm going to mute my live microphone so that you're hearing what I was saying last night. I'm going to I'm not going to run it all the way through, but um, I actually reached a thousand last night. Here you go.
there's some kind of delays. There, finally, it's unmuted on both of them. All right, I got some weird things going on here with with this. Uh, let's see, I need to unmute sound coming through. Um, Jason, can I hear you yet? Nope, I guess not. So I'm going to try starting this video again. I've got to rewind it to the beginning. So this is going to be a little by YouTube against our YouTube monetization policies. Seen here. And here's a button, notify me when I am eligible. Well, I think I'm no, eligible don't now. Don't pay attention to it yet. So what okay, is this here? About? I'm gonna rewind it to the beginning. So here it is, August 28th on a Saturday evening, 6, 21 p.m. currently a few minutes ago. I got a message that came through on my phone indicating somebody made a comment on my YouTube channel that I had reached 1,000 subscribers. So there it is, 1,000 subscribers, yeehaw. If I come over here to comments, we see who actually made that comment. Here it is, plus one, 13 minutes ago, 1,000th sub. Keep up the great content, looking forward to all that you will do on YouTube in the future. Well, thank you so much, plus one. Oh, that's <laughs> he's making that comment on my uh, planning retreat video where I have a thumbnail. It says sometimes five minds are uh, as good as one. What did I say? Better than one. Uh, so I had the word one in the uh, thumbnail. So there it is. Yeehaw. And let's see what, what what does monetization say now. There I got a green check mark. Two-step verification. Uh, 1,000 subscribe. Oh, these were other things. Zero active. Jeez, I had me on mute. Ay. So, I guess even Jason didn't hear what I was saying there unless he was hearing me through Zoom. Yeah, so I said, said Jason's audio is not coming through and he's not on mute. And we've had this problem ever since he since we connected. Ay caramba, crazy sound day. And um, so I was asking if anybody in chat can read lips. And can you read Jason's lips and type into chat what he's saying? And we could just do the whole session that way. All right. Um, Gary says audio is good. <laughs> Ken says no audio here. So 
<clears throat> I think Gary must be saying my audio is coming through because I don't think you're hearing Ken. If you're hearing Ken, tell me that in chat because maybe you guys are hearing Ken and I'm not. Is that possible? Is it possible for you to be hearing him and me not hearing him? I don't see how that would be happening. Ken says audio is good now. Okay, specifically, are you hearing Jason? Ken says, if you're hearing me, that's wonderful. I'm not on Zoom. Well, Ken, you're just so loud. I, I, I can hear you, yeah. Uh, Legend Projects, I wonder if he has me muted. Legend Projects, I'll check. I think you might be muted. <laughs> Ken says, cannot hear Jason. No audio on Jason from Gary. Okay, so, yeah, they cannot hear you, Jason. So, Jason, in your Zoom, down in the bottom left corner where that mute button is, there's that little arrow pointed up, and that'll have a place where you can choose what microphone you're going to be broadcasting through. Okay. So, there it is. There it is. I hear okay. you. Is that right. did, did that do the trick? I, I guess it did. So because <laughs> I have it go, I have it going through my computer, and I just selected it the whole way through. And I guess I had to do it through Zoom as well, even though it didn't say I was muted. I don't know. It, it's weird. Yeah, I think Zoom had <laughs> must have had a different microphone choice than your computer. Well, I guess even though it said same as system on both the speaker and the microphone, oh. and which is what I have this set as, yeah. you know, for audio and mic. Yeah. And I just had to select this. So, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Gotta uh, love this. <laughs> crazy audio. I messed up my audio. I messed up the audio of the video that I was playing. I messed up the timing on the video I was playing. <laughs> yeah, I already knew I was going to be a little late, but this just made matters, uh, you know, a little more interesting. So, <laughs> Well, you got into Zoom before broadcast time. I don't know how, how you consider I, that to be late. Oh well, I don't know. Well, it's later than what I I usually try to be right on the dot at twelve forty five. Oh, in the same room with you. So All right. anything after that to me is late. So <laughs> fifteen minutes prior has always been a thing with me. So right on the money. So it didn't work out this time. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take a quick scroll through the chat. I don't think I'm going to read very yeah, much there it. because it's all been just pretty much the, 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 uh, about the audio and stuff. And I'll just hit the ones about that are uh, in, in orange. And I already responded to that. And um, Zavi Manor is, is suggesting that I add some sound to the Google Earth thing that runs at the beginning. So I'm interested. I, I've sometimes opened my mic and talked through it. And the thousand subscribers and the email address between Ken and Gary. And uh, Javi is saying sound like elevator music. He's wanting to add elevator music, but that's kind of a, that's not a happy face. Is that maybe a joke? Um, I, I've got a couple ideas of something else to do at the beginning. We may get to something. Uh, Catherine's saying congratulations. I'm sure that has to do with my false claim of a thousand subscribers <laughs> as of last night. Uh, not deaf, audio good, I don't want muted. And Legend Projects, by the way, hello. I don't recall seeing your name before. If you're uh, yeah, here. that's me. <laughs> oh, that's you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's why you're saying that. Okay. I only made one other appearance on chat. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, I didn't realize that. Well, it's well, we got to go make you a got to go make you a moderator, don't we? Add moderator. So now your subsequent comments in chat should turn up blue. Uh, audio, audio, audio. Can hear, can hear. Uh, do, 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 do. And Yay. Blackwatch showed up. Oh, yeah, there's great. Who is the gray haired guy? Yeah, that's me. You know, the one who likes playing with his buttons. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And there's your blue. All right. Great. Yeah, great. Yeah. Coming back. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> do we actually get started now? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. 15 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. Gee. We're on an awful good roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So you you made a comment in your email this morning. Something new you you're saying? Yeah, it's uh, something else I'm going to be adding to my uh, services is uh, which I haven't added it yet, but a uh, bunch of people that I know that uh, uses like consoles for everything that they do, even streaming TV and stuff. They are they're always complaining about uh, not having enough enough storage. So. I've been looking into uh, how about uh, about how to go about adding or upgrading, you know, the amount of storage and consoles like Xbox and PlayStation. So uh, I've been uh, I got you know I got like two or three Xboxes laying around. So I'm just going to be uh, using them as my test subjects to uh, uh, see about uh, upgrading the hard drives and on. Um, for more storage and also i've been reading uh reading up about uh when they when hard drives fail in these uh oftentimes uh an ssd would be put in their place so i'm looking at uh getting that added in doing that for people too in my area because nobody in my area is doing that cool. so uh that would be a probably a pretty good prop for me to uh you know be doing this for people in my area because they have to go at least an hour out of their way drive time to have something done or send it in when something fails in their console so i'm like well you know it's a hard drive you know it's a pc part you know i usually have some of them waiting around you know oh and yeah yeah it'd be a pretty good uh pretty good service for sure for me to offer on top of what i'm already doing so that's that's the new upcoming thing i'm working on good to, yeah, it's hopefully here soon. I'll have that. I'll be able to uh, add that in there. Good. Um, so. Something that came to my mind during, as you were describing that was, do you have any kind of outdoor markets? Um, uh, yeah, we actually have. Uh, we actually have two. Uh, we have we have two flea markets. Once an outdoor and once an indoor. Yeah. And. Uh, that as far as like market, you know, markets go. I mean, I can probably open a new store, but I don't know. So yeah, well, I um, did. The I'm thing that occurred to me that. there is is what if you were to have a, a a booth, a table at a at an outdoor market like that where you're doing yeah upgrades for consoles or other things that you could do right there in in front of them. That would be, you know, yeah, that would uh. That would actually be, and uh, do that for PCs as well. Yeah. So that, and and uh, obviously more intensive stuff. You know, that, that's another subject on that. But like doing. But they could deliver stuff. it yeah. to you there. Yeah, yeah. I, that can be the one. You know, they can bring it in and say, "Hey, I want. I, you know, this was going on. I need you to take care of it for me." Okay, and then there you go. As far as getting out, uh, as far as getting exposure. To people right, getting right. getting known that sounds like a great place to yeah to do and, that uh, i don't know why i didn't think of that think about that uh before because the outdoor flea market out here it they're only on open on weekends and sure the place is booming every weekend oh wow that would get you in front of people oh so, i'm glad you mentioned that <laughs> i think it's like uh i think it's like 10 bucks a table for the weekend i, yeah. I can probably do that yeah you know and I could also use my PC just on display, like, yeah, right. this is what I do, yada, yada, yada. And then I have, you know, then once I, uh, once I figure out the console thing is I, once I get that up and, you know, to where I can do that, you know, for, you know, proficiently, Hey, I do this too. <laughs> and then so. not, not only have your stuff on display, but when you're not engaged with a potential customer, you could actually be demonstrating replacing right. parts with your on your own stuff so you're always doing something there right and that could be really cool yeah that's a that's a that's a cheap yeah, cheap that's, advertising uh, so that might just be my ticket from getting out there even more because uh uh right now it's really slow paced or way it's going and yeah. uh which i did a uh i did a job last weekend it was another uh it was another graphics card upgrade that i did for uh actually the same person he uh he wanted to 
he seen uh, what an upgrade can do and decided to do another one. So, uh, yeah, I, I've been getting business out of him. But, cool. Uh, hey, he's uh, he's like, yeah. So he he's uh, so far it's my that's been my only comeback customer. But hey, you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, so, that's good. And you're, you're yeah, doing yeah. Fine. So, and uh, yeah, and I'm hoping. I haven't got around to doing business cards yet. I'm still trying to uh, figure out how I want it to look. So, okay. Well, you are, are you uh, aware and familiar with how to print your own as a way to just kind of experiment with them until you're ready to get some professionally printed? Well, I'm actually uh, when it comes to business cards, that's probably that's one thing I, I'm quite illiterate about. You know, I've never messed with them. I've seen Okay. I've seen them before, but as far as like making my own, I'm I'm kind of shooting dark darts in the dark with it. So okay, well, just just a very very short easy thing. Um, Avery labels. Uh, you can buy a sheet of business cards. They're you know perforated. So once you right. print the whole sheet, you just tear off the perforations, and I believe they have downloadable software for it, or even within Microsoft Word, you can go file new and templates and choose a business card template. And so we've got it structured for you. You just type in the content of what you want. It's fairly easy to do. Um, and if you, if you, you could, it might take a little bit of doing to get a, you know, positioning that you feel comfortable with. And then also, I've ordered uh, business cards online and found them very inexpensive and able to order small quantities. So there, there's yeah, ways to go about doing that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen, uh, I've, I've browsed the internet a little bit about ordering some, uh, you know, just some basic ones. Because uh, right now, a basic one probably do me justice. Sure. And uh, you, do. you can get like a stack of 100 of them for uh, pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, I might just, well, I, I've just been to my whole way of thinking on this. I wanted something to be, you know, my own, something that nobody else has, you yeah. know, you know, that kind of route that I've really decided yet which direction I want to go on them. Well, while you're at a, a table at a swap meet, when you're giving them the business card, you're, you're just giving them a way to contact you. They've already met right. you. The nice looking mm. business card to try to get a person interested in you is when that's their first impression. They haven't met you yet. So you just you can go quick and easy and, and, and cheap to get yourself out at that at that swap meet. Let's take a little look at, at, at chat here. I've been kind of looking over it here to see if there's anything that I really need to mention. I'm not going to try to read through them all that you know I, ne I never asked somebody to check the dvr but i do recall that i turned it on uh research a dvr to use with amazon fire stick okay that was ken asking you and do, 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 seen my channel oh no doug seen my channel is drinking coffee no i'm not this is tea i do that drink coffee but this is <laughs> pardon that was when uh right before the sound came Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. On screen. All right. <laughs> um, order them online. Uh, render current and get that. I will render current and get that out. That's again between the chit chat. Uh, something bar hopping. Tired out. This to print. Part I meant. Just open a tab for that. Okay, so I'm not going to yeah. go through those in yeah, in I've detail. Been to keep up with it too. <laughs> All right. So that sounds like an interesting direction, both the console and the and the idea of going yeah, out to and, swap uh, me. Yeah, because it, it seems like uh, people around here they want to like they don't want to get a whole new thing because you know it costs a lot of money to just get a whole new system, whether it's console, PC, or what have you. They just want to make what they have better. So and. That's kind of the route that, you know, that just seems like that's a good opportunity for me to kind of get hands on anyway, because I'm a hands on person to begin with. Yeah. So, and which I'm, I've been slow, I've been slowly getting the software side of stuff 
along along the way with uh like say the graphics cards i've been doing you know there's a driver update software that goes with them so that software you download to your pc or whatever and you just it, show them how to use it and all that so there's a little <laughs> so let, let me throw out a couple other ideas for the, for the okay. swap meet. Um, I'm a very strong believer in giving away value in order to get uh, business. So you can give away um, um, the small, simple value to get somebody more sincerely interested in you. For example, you're having a conversation with somebody there, and maybe it's about a, the, an Xbox, and then that, you ask them, well, do you have computers, laptops? Do they do you, do you need them to work better for you? Or, and, and you get maybe into a conversation about memory, and, and, and you throw out what, it would, what you would charge to upgrade their memory, or maybe you just do it yourself, Mr. 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 Jones, and here's the way you could go about it. You could open up the case. Here, I'll demonstrate how to open up a case. And then take the memory out and take a picture of it with your cell phone. Come back to me next week, and I'll help you figure out what to what to order for a memory replacement. So you're kind of giving them some value because while you're there at the booth, you could be charging for some for some consultation fee right there. But I'd be more inclined that what you're helping people with there or teaching them or something is value that you're giving the giving away that causes them to come back to see you. They might make a special trip back to the swap meet so they can have a conversation with you. And then further down the road, when they need something that's really more of a, a fee-based thing, they turn to you. They, they tell story, the story of their experience with you to other people. It's a way of building relationships. Build relationships. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I want to say have that on your, on your mind. Um, Okay, so Gary making a comment there about, well, to Catherine, about using Windows 11 with no troubles. Oh, there's a beta ver uh, version out for that right now, isn't there? Yeah, well, it's, I don't think it's called beta. It, it, oh, it's yeah. Insider's Edition, but they're October, Gary told us the date yesterday, and um, October, towards the end of the month, they're going to be releasing to the public so that anybody could could upgrade right. to it. Um, beta, the term beta really isn't part of Windows vocabulary. Sometimes I hear people describe well, that. Well, that's, that that's just what I know things like that as. Yeah, that's but, essentially you know, what it before is. Before it hits the public. It's testing. So, beta right. is a testing channel. Well, Insiders is testing. They call right. it Insiders Channel. And, they, and within the Insiders Channel, they have the developers track and what pre-release or RTM or I, I don't know what the different terms are, but there's different levels of, of uh, testing available. Um, so, so it was just some more stuff going on there in, in chat about Windows 11. I can see you're responding to somebody. Yeah, it's just to hold the insider program like we were talking about because, uh, you know, with you saying, you know, with Gary doing that, you know, because I've, I've, I've been thinking for a while about uh, doing that. So yeah. I was going to uh, comment to him, you know, about. All right. Well, here uh, Catherine's saying it is called beta dev or, or I suppose I suppose beta preview. So I think she's contradicting me saying that they do use the word beta um so that's that's fine um i certainly don't claim to be any expert on what they're doing there and i made comment yesterday that i'm i'm not super eager to to um install it on well my computers aren't capable currently my client computers i'm not eager to install on because it doesn't give them anything that they don't currently have. Uh, when it gets to the point where Windows Update is automatically trying to install it, I think I'll be fine with that at that time. 
I was resistant to Windows 10 upgrades from Windows 7. I, I delayed those and put those off because we had troubles with those, with uh, vertical market software. And all of the testing that's going on now, it's not with my client's vertical market software. And it's been a little uh, discouraging to me to hear some of the things of, of even basic Windows functionality that took a while to get up to speed um, that were not working right in Windows 11. And I, and I scratched my head about that. How do you take Windows 10 and slap a Windows 11 label on it, yet some of the Windows 10 stuff is now broken? Um, and I, I, I can't say specifically what those were. I just heard the reports of those, mostly through Windows Weekly is where those were coming from. Uh, I've been thinking, yeah, pros, cons can go. I uh, just downloaded Windows 11, installed VirtualBox today. Great. So once it starts, Windows 11 starts getting into my client's office with their vertical market software, with their old printers, with their old file servers, um, with, with whatever else of legacy that they're doing that's where i'm concerned about yeah um I'm, I'm about like you right now is i'm not in no rush to go to windows 11 once it's released because um uh, i mean they're still uh they're still throwing support for windows 10 till what 2025 yeah October. and everything else everything else like you was saying about the printers and everything they they gotta catch up to the new uh, operating system they got to start putting all that stuff on the market and all that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, that, that takes time. Yeah. So, um, now I, like I don't, with anything else. So I'm going to, I'm going to abide my time and see how yeah. things go myself. So I don't criticize or discourage anyone who wants to. Right. You know, if that's what they want to do. Go to it immediately. It. That's fine. Um, and I am a substantial believer and enthusiastic about the higher security promises that Windows 11 offers. But of course, we've got to get the computer hardware in place that supports that for those that don't already have it. Now, this thing, this experience that we went through recently with Joe Ellen, where I was focusing on purchasing a computer that was not Windows 11 capable, and Catherine Anna Hauserman pointed out pointed that out. I just went, oh my gosh, I've got a computer that I need to order this weekend for a client, and it's going to be another one of the same model computers that we have ordered for them like five times over the last two years. And now I'm thinking, I need to go look and see, have all five of those been capable of Windows 11 because we might be running into a problem with them in October. I think they were maybe just barely high enough for Windows 11 CPU requirements, but I need to go look. And of course, this one I'm about to order, I'm not going to order the same model if those previous ones were not Windows 11 capable. Oh, here, uh, TV tried Chrome operating system. That's something that I'm looking to do for these all-in-one computers for the for the games. Uh, Gary says, who said that it's Windows 10 with Windows 11 label on it? Um, I've heard that from a lot of sources, including Windows Weekly. Um, so look bad for Windows 11, try Chrome <coughs> OS. I bet the security additions for Windows 11 are interacting with the stuff that's broken. Hmm, that might be. Yeah. Um, except the things that, that Windows Weekly was reporting as broken, they were kind of some simple, um, uh, like <laughs> control panel settings. <laughs> Blackwatch, how did you divide the resources to VM at what ratio? Asking that to Catherine. The latest I've been told is Windows 10 Home will be supported until 10.25. I think Windows 11 Pro will not be supported that long. I'm surprised to hear that. I thought, I, oh, wait a minute, Windows 11 Pro. 
I don't think he meant to say Windows 11 Pro. I think he meant to say Windows 10 Pro will not be supported that long. Certainly Windows 11 Pro is going to be supported for a long time. Um, I would have thought that Windows 10 Pro will partic well, I guess what I mean is Enterprise. The Enterprise Windows 10, I would expect to be supported longer. Maybe you have to pay for the ex extended support contract for that. And Microsoft has published since the beginning of Windows 10 that they will support some edition of Windows 10 until October 25. They, that's, that, that, that came out when they first published Windows 10. They changed CPU requirements, have changed. Yeah, and there may be more changes. Uh, how is the nuclear fallout there? Or are you still registering as static? Uh, Jeff was on uh, yesterday on live stream with me, and he has uh, nuclear it, and industry. It, it, that that's what he retired from. So I noticed a lot of specs have changed. Yeah, Catherine, four gigabytes of RAM, thirty-two of storage, and how well will it, will it run with that? And that's something that I've got on these all-in-ones. Um, I'll get to that comment in a moment. Sam says, I'm in a strange situation. I have clients who will only upgrade to Windows 11 on their supported computer. I have a non-supported laptop with Windows 11 i7-7700. Gary, Windows 10 Pro shorter business environment will not be until 1025 because of TPM. Okay, there we go. He would know. Microsoft always changing things. So uh, this comment up here about the the memory and the and the storage on these all in one PCs. I <clears throat> I had a couple of them here. As I, I mentioned yesterday that the games are no longer launching on them. There's been no Windows updates. The only thing I could do to fix the games was to reinstall individual games. I tried various different repairs and resets, and that didn't fix things. But something else I noticed is when the computers were sitting idle for long periods of time, the CPU would occasionally go up to 100% for a substantial amount of time. And then alternatively, the hard drive would go up to 100% uh, on, on occasion and stay there for a while. And that would, that would happen. These computers were just high utilization when they're sitting idle. And the different elements that were taking the CPU processing time and the hard drive processing time, there were things like um, indexing and Windows Update. And Windows Update, I had the updates deferred for five weeks. So they shouldn't have been doing anything with updates. And what this told me was all those games, I had like 76, 65 games, something like that, on these desktops from the game, from the, um, from the Microsoft Store. And I think what's happening is even though I have deferred Windows operating system updates, I think those uh, <clears throat> Microsoft Store apps are just randomly, uh, frequently trying to update themselves in the background. And so I'm thinking that the, <clears throat> the older CPU of these computers was part is partially responsible for how much CPU time that those were taken. Now it wasn't always pegged at 100 percent. Might be 90 percent, 100 percent. And I'm thinking I want to do a video having them side by side with slightly different configurations. And I also did this with SSD. I installed SSD and extra RAM in one of the computers, and they're still maxing out CPU and hard drive. Uh, even with the SSD. <clears throat> My theory was that maybe with the SSD, it'll be less demanding on the CPU because an SSD should be able to accomplish things quicker and release the CPU from whatever process is running at the time. And I just found it completely baffling that these older computers were having such a struggling time with Windows 10. And I'm wondering if it's the the Microsoft Store apps. 
So one of my A-B tests that I have in mind is to set up two computers side by side, one that doesn't have any games installed and the other that has the games installed. And these were both started from the same fresh Windows 10 installation. They're cloning. I made image backups of various steps through this process. So I have the capability of having one computer with a fresh Windows 10 with updates installed and another one fresh Windows 10 updates installed and 65 Microsoft Store games and see if that is the difference between these. All right, catch up here on chat. So Stan's strange situation, I'm not sure I quite understand the question there, if there is a question. I have clients who will only upgrade to Windows 10, 11 on their supported computer. Well, that makes sense. I have a non-supported laptop with Windows 11. Well, that makes sense too. You can, you won't, when, when it goes public, my understanding is you'll have to go back to Windows 7. You won't be able to stay with Windows 11 on that non-supported computer. Uh, let's see, I already read that. Changing things, the setting, Catherine's telling us the settings for VirtualBox. Cannot upgrade to Windows 11. But my clients will only, oh, his clients will only do Windows 11 if he has Windows 11. Maybe that's what he's saying. Uh, so his clients have actually stated that. We're not going to do it unless you do it. Oh, there's no hurry to do it. Have you looked at the new CPU list from last Thursday? No, I haven't. That's from Gary to Sam. Sometimes the supporter needs all the support, evens out in the wash. Uh, Sam's got seventh gen. Uh, I have until 2025 before I get a new laptop. Yeah, most of you is Intel fans. I'm, I'm an Intel fan, but I don't resist an AMD. I would. And, and mostly the reason why I have why I prefer Intel is because I've had some vertical market software from clients where they specify Intel only. And I think that's only because they only want to support Intel. Um, but that that's really my reason. I don't care which CPU I have as long as it's powerful enough. And and that's fair. I I think I have I have I have an Atom. Yeah. My Microsoft Surface is two gigabytes of memory, <laughs> and I think it's what is the the uh, the lower end Intel Atom or some some other name, and it performs really well with two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's one of the early Microsoft Service Surface computers. Might work with Windows 11. They're just not telling. They are hiding info. That could be. Um, it's not power. It's TPM. And Sam True. All right, caught up. Back to Jason. Anything else you got to tell us about? Well, that's pretty. That's uh, then, yeah. No, I really have anything no. else to add. But uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I could add. Uh, as far as uh, zip files. I've, uh, that's one of the things that you got to do with uh, swapping the hard drives out on consoles is uh, oh. on the new on the new one is you know part the software that you download to uh, put on the new uh, whether it's another HDD or SSD is you download a zip file from uh, Microsoft for Xbox and then Sony for PlayStation is uh, you know once you download the uh, zip file is you have to extract it onto a uh, thumb drive and then uh, once you have the, uh, the new storage installed on the you know, on the system is you have to uh, install you know plug in the thumb drive on the console and it's you know there's a you know there's a process okay but and that's kind of where I'm kind of sit sitting still right now is maybe I'm not understanding how zip files work okay uh, as far as like their process of uh, how to go about it. So that's what I've been trying to uh, figure out. So, uh, and 
uh, seems like other consoles, like other brands, you know, they're kind of have their own process of how you got to go about doing this. So, but you basically download the zip file, which is the OS to make these run. So, uh, yeah, so uh, zip files. Zip files. <laughs> okay. Um, that's you, where I'm at. Do you know how to do zip files on Windows 10? Well, that's uh, something I need. Probably I need to get some school on all this. Well, let, let really... me just go. Let me just do a go do a quick little thing here. I'm going to bring up my computer number two, and I'll just go to uh, Windows Explorer. Let's go into my uh, one of my folders here that has a bunch of utilities. So here's. Uh, Let's see. So, so this Windows Tools .zip right here that that has a zipper on it. It is a zip file. Right. So let's see if I if I take these two files right here. I want to make a zip file out of them. I can I can right click, and then send to compressed zipped folders. I click on that. One of them can't be added because they're online only. Oh, see the cloud thing there? Those are online. Do you want to make them available offline and continue? So when I answer yes there, it's going to give me a green check mark on those. So it's actually downloading them from my OneDrive. And then it can make the zip file. So basically what I'm saying is that it, here it is. It's done. It has used the same name as one of those two files. And this is the zip file. And I can double click into that and there's those uh, files that are in that uh, zip file so now that i can i can right click on that and copy it to some other device so uh, zip files on on windows 10 is just <laughs> hugely easy you don't have to install any additional software and then another thing that's just incredibly easy, I'm going to delete this zip file because I don't need it there. That's incredibly easy with um, removing that everywhere. Yeah, so it'll remove it from my OneDrive as well. Is um, ISO images. Let's see, do, do, I'm sure I must have an ISO image around here somewhere. Windows 7 updates, Revo, uh, uh, let's see, let's do this way. Let's go up to, I think, resource files, and then search for asterisk.iso. Uh, nada. Can I simulate making an ISO file out of something that's not really ISO content? How would I want to do that? Debugging tools, upgrade tools. Well, let's just. I'll just choose some files at random here, a bunch of files. Uh, right click, can I send that to ISO? Really what I'm what I'm after is if I have an ISO file on my computer, you can just right click on that file and choose mount. And you're you're mounting it I as an I here yeah, okay, here we go. Windows and spin right. All right, I'll take spin right. And I'm going to right click on that. And right here is mount. So that's an ISO file. I can mount it. And so now it is, it is mounted as it looks like D drive. So now if I open another Windows Explorer and go to this PC, I see right here it's mounted as a D drive. It looks like a DVD drive but it's not it's just a virtual drive and then i could install whatever is on that on that drive so pre but prior to windows 10 you pretty much had to install some extra third party program to do either of those functions now i could right click on this and should be a eject so that's essentially is dismounting it and then with with your consoles, I'd have to wonder if you can, because those are actually 
hard drives or SSDs just like any other drive, yeah. uh, can you remove those from those drives and connect them through a USB adapter to a PC and just use any imaging program well, to I've, uh, clone it? I've watched, uh, you know, there's uh, videos on YouTube of people doing that. All right. But they have a, uh, like, they have their own software that they use for cloning. And uh, that's something, but I don't have the adapters and stuff to do so. Uh, but I do have a thumb drive, and that's the other way. It's either you clone it or you use a thumb drive yeah. for the consoles. And then you uh, you actually, for Xbox, you go to the Microsoft website for, uh, you know, Xbox. And you down. It's a uh, when you do the thumb drive, is you're doing a uh, you're doing an offline update with the new uh, SSD or hard drive that you're putting in there. Because <clears throat> you know a, a white hard drive, you know how they are. There's nothing for the you know anything to boot from the boot from with your PC or Xbox. So that's what the thumb drive is. Is I actually I already got it downloaded. Okay. Uh, I can actually, let's see, it is called, let me tell you what it's called once I find it. It is the osu1.zip. It's uh, 6.1 gigabytes from Microsoft. That's what the zip file is called. Um, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So, I have to wonder if doing the process through the USB and zip drive is could be a method that um, Microsoft provides to be able to do this upgrade self-contained without having to use a computer. And would using a computer be an easier, quicker process? And it could be that the USB and zip file is completely easy and quick enough on its own. It might be easier. Don't know. You well, here is, I'll share the uh, uh, process that it's, that they have on the website. Uh, let's see. Is this is the, on, You know, it tells you to use a uh, flash drive and you need at least six gigs of uh, space and uh, plug it into a USB port, open the offline system. Oh, this does involve a Windows PC. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm, so, I'm sure you must uh, have said just that. To, that's it's basically to uh, All right. gather, you know, using the Windows PC to uh, that get the software and format the thumb drive. Okay. And, uh, you know, basically get the thumb drive ready to put in the Xbox. So, okay. But then, yeah. to, then to my point, this method is without requiring a person to remove a drive from the Xbox and connect it to the PC. And that might be more of a nuisance right. than it's worth doing. Which, uh, I don't know. I've never considered Well, in the uh, shops, you know, and basically all your PC shops, you know, that, I've, that I know about, they have, you know, the ability to take, you know, take the old one out yeah, and do the whole cloning process. You know, they're set up for that versus I'm not. So that's the reason I'm going this route because I already got everything for it. Oh, sure. So, okay, good. And uh, I'm not really out nothing. I just go through this. So. All right. Uh, now here on step one is. I did all that, then copied the the system update file from the zip file to the flash drive. I did it, and. And, you know, it says to actually unplug the flash drive from the computer. And then here's the, uh, how many it tells you. So, uh, see, the offline system update is what you're going to be doing. Okay. So, for the trope, you know, because I already uh, made it up to this far, uh, this, I made it this far with it, but every time I put the thumb drive in, when I did this, this would never highlight it was unclickable oh so that's the issue that i'm running into so i i would uh you know 
the first time it did that, I realized I didn't format the thumb drive as the NTFS. So I went, I redid that and tried it again. That's not the case. So that didn't, that didn't, didn't solve it. it. No. So, and that's the issue that I'm having. I so, see. Uh, and, you know, this is all like, this is from the, you know, X, this is from support for Xbox, you know, for this is their process. So. Okay, well, let's scroll back up a little bit. Let me take a closer look at it now that I understand that this is. Uh, how, how far you need me to scroll up? Well, let's see. So that step two is update your console. Then scrolling up is, I guess, preparing the USB. Yeah, the step one is preparing the USB. All right. And, uh, okay, stay download. right. Th stay right there for for a moment. Let me let me okay. look at that. To use offline system, you'll need when does that say six gigabytes of space formats as NTFS. So you got that part covered. Yes. A uh, most come format is FAT32. Fine. Erase uh, format. Uh, how to format flash perform okay so you're okay with how to format the usb yeah. you did that uh open the offline system update file osu1 so open that's a clickable link right there to to open it right that osu1 <laughs> that's underscored that's a clickable link for you Oh yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah that yeah. that takes you to it. That takes you to it. So you, yeah, you open it. Don't click on it and see it pulls it. it. That's where it actually downloads it. Okay. So okay, so then click save. Save the console zip to your computer, not to the USB. Right. I Unzip the file by right clicking, selecting extract from the pop up menu. Copy the system update file from the zip zip to your flash drive. So that's straightforward enough. The file should be copied to the root directory. There shouldn't be any other files on the flash drive. You got right. that covered, right? right? Unplug from the USB. Okay, now scroll scroll down a bit to bring the step two up to the top of the screen. Um, you can update your console using Xbox Troubleshooter. Okay, bring it up. Power off your console. Unplug. Ensure the comp console completely powered off. Wait 30 seconds. Plug the cord back in. Press and hold the pair button. Located on the left side of the console and the eject button located on the front of the console and press Xbox. Okay, so that's the instructions to get to this troubleshooter console. You got to that. You were able to get to that. Yeah. And okay. The, here's the thing. I want to make a comment on that. It all right. Is, uh, I got to troubleshoot without having to do that step. Oh. Is the, uh, you know, sorry, I have a, uh, Four terabyte HDD that I uh, plant that was uh, uh, testing with, you know, just to go through the, uh, you know, just to go through this with, see if I can get work. And uh, when you I already had this uh, four terabyte storage installed in the, in the Xbox, I didn't have to go through no, none of that to uh, get to troubleshoot. So. <laughs> okay, well, I'd have to wonder if if doing that method of getting to troubleshoot might somehow put the troubleshooter into a different mode. That might make a difference Possibly. to pay, put it, making that button available. I, now, I don't. Just I wonder, maybe. Just maybe. And say that's kind of what's throwing me off is getting like a you know this picture that it's uh, showing is that's the same exact thing that I get without having to go through holding the pair button, inject buttons, and all okay. that. So well, it's just, I, I, maybe I, I have to do that anyway in right. order to... Right. Uh, but I got so another I, idea. I, I got another idea on this, but let me let me read a little bit more. Okay. The Xbox Series S and above, and the Xbox One S, do not have eject buttons. You can bring up the Xbox Troubleshoot on these consoles by holding down the power button and then pressing the Xbox button. So, two different methods depending upon what model you have. Yeah. I'm assuming you understand. Yeah, that there's a, they got uh, just some clarification on that is they have uh, Xboxes with no CD drive that don't take disc, and they then they have an all digital editions with no CD drive where you have to download everything. So, and that's what it's referring to is the digital uh, version versus one where you can insert a game disc into it 
All right. That's the difference right there. All right. Sure. This this next part sounds might might be significant. Continue holding the parent eject for 10 to 15 seconds. Listen for two power up tones a couple seconds apart. You can release the power and eject buttons after the second power up tone. Are you getting those tones? I didn't get any of them, so maybe I got to do that to get. I would think so. The console then then after the second power you can return. Okay. The console should power up and take you directly to the Xbox startup troubleshoot. Yeah, it, it sounds to me like this could put it into a different mode. Scroll down some more. Plug the USB flash drive with the online offline system update into the USB port. When the flash drive is inserted, the offline system update option on the Xbox becomes active. So the offline system update isn't supposed to become active until you plug in the USB that has that update file. Then use the D-pad and A button on your controller to select offline system update. So that part here, it looks like what I'm understanding is after it gets to this troubleshoot screen, then plug in the USB flash drive that has that those files and that's supposed to make this option become active. So I'd want to I'd want to follow that very precisely because any of those previous steps might have an impact on whether that's happens so or not. Basically, even though it goes uh, when I have this installed, is still go through with the buttons. Yeah, and... I think so. Okay. So I think so. I mean, it's it's possible it, when, when it automatically comes up to the screen, if you then plug in that USB device and the button becomes available, then you're probably OK. But if it doesn't, oh, that come, wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. So I think, <laughs> yeah, follow those prior steps with those buttons precisely and listen for those tones, because I think those tones are probably indicating a different some kind of a different special I guess, mode. Yeah, it, it's uh, something they have made into it, I guess, to, uh, I guess, accept it or put it, like you're saying, in a certain... Yeah. Mode. Now, here's another thing. Are you doing this with a new blank drive installed? A yeah. hard drive? Like, yeah. Yeah, well, see, that is, there's another thing that I wonder about. This is called update, not install. Well, that's the that was kind of the uh, thing, too, is... Uh, there, you know, what I've gathered so far in the research is uh, how I even came across this is the guy had uh, actually installed a new, uh, he actually installed an SSD, the Samsung 860 SSD, I think is what it was. But <clears throat> anyways, it was, uh, it was right out the box, nothing. He didn't even format it. And he took out the box, put it in there, and oh. did this. All right. All right. So well, that makes it sound like this would work what, then. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. He's, uh, and that was, I think, the first time he's ever did that. So I guess he lucked out. I All don't right. know. But that's just what I'm uh, saying. So I'm trying to, I'm like, well, that's a pretty common thing around here is uh, people complaining about storage. And, well, I'm here. So. <laughs> All right. Let's 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 go catch up on, on, on chat. Uh, let's see, I'll scroll up to where I think I had something highlighted. Did I? No, I didn't. Uh, where did I leave off? Uh, let's... Wow, a lot of stuff in here, but not a lot that's addressed to me. So maybe I'm going to skip over stuff that's not addressed to me. Settings are for VirtualBox. Yeah, I remember that with Catherine VirtualBox. Uh, CPU list, yeah, Intel fans, right, I did see that, TPM, oh yeah, ATM, Catherine hearing me talk about, I think it's an Atom, not ATM, <clears throat> but whatever is on that computer, but that computer works great for what I need it for. Um, uh, sweet, is there a way to make custom Windows 10 ISO? I want to preload soft. Yes, there is a way to do that. I've never been been through it, um, but that, that's Googleable. Um, and 
Yeah, I'm really not an expert on that. I shouldn't be saying too much about it. But yes, there is a way. Whether you are in a position that you can make use of that, I don't, I don't know. Um, and I think that's something Gary knows about. As I said, flash, let's see, but same flash drive needed for work. Uh, install zip, install 7-zip for any concern other than zip. So, yeah, uh, Sam, I, I, I have to wonder. There are some advantages with using the th third-party zip programs. I just never come across it. I can just do all the zipping I need from within Windows 10 natively. Uh, you can upgrade to Windows 11, Windows 10 by changing a Prezeris DL in the ISO search. Iventoy, Gary Simia, Iventoy multi-boot, Windows 10 install from ISO, and so will Windows 11 now. Why is Sam not a mod? Just wondering. Basically, I've, in response to mods, I've only made people moderators when they've said that they want to post a link. Um, and I've requested that people don't do um, uh, blocking and, and deleting of the comments. But for now, I want to be involved in that. We had a situation a couple streams ago where we had some of that going on. And I was fine with you guys to, um, uh, hiding the comments or whatever it, it's called for that person that was being abusive, but I did get involved in that and wound up um, hiding her from the channel. But for now, I do still want to be involved in that. Uh, I have no hesitation to making somebody a moderator if you just ask for it. And add Linux. Uh, Sam, if computers... I did have one person... When I offered to make them a moderator, they said, no, please don't. I don't remember who that was or didn't know why. If a computer is not supported, I will not do modifications to install newer Windows. Oh, I agree with that. I've, if a client asks me if I can install Windows 11 on their computer and it's not doesn't meet the specs, I, I would highly advise them against it. They would have to give me a strong argument why they, they want it. Uh, and I, I'm hard pressed to imagine. I, I'd, I'd be telling them that okay, but you're going to pay for every minute I work on that, um, which is usually the case anyway. For new install from USB, yeah, I see. I would be very reluctant to use a third-party installation media. I, I, for people who feel comfortable and confident with that, fine. I'm not going to argue against that, but I would not want somebody who is not does not feel personally confident of, of using a, a non-Microsoft source for that. Mom's laptop is older than my laptop, still using the same laptop after 2025 and installed Linux for her. I think that's completely fine. And Sam, I don't know if you were in the stream yesterday. I, th I think you do have lots of experience with Linux. As these all-in-one PCs I'm wanting to install Chrome OS on those, and that involves Linux. Um, so just for your information, I think that's a road I'm going to go down. Rufus and Clonezilla, free, not that great. A Cronus tree, true image, not free, but very good. And I use Macrium Reflect. It is free. There's a free version for that. Uh, so I made Sam. Why am I a moderator? Um, I guess, Sam, just because some people think that that is a nice person thing. If you don't want to be moderator, I'm, I'll take it away. I don't care one way or the other. Uh, yes, you do post helpful info and your recognized name in the chat. And I guess I guess that's kind of become a thing because that's the way Kerry Holzman does it. When he recognizes somebody in chat and they putting in a nice comment, he makes them blue. Kind of just as a way of acknowledging that about them. And he wants them to do the moderating duties. Um, I am not asking you for, for you to do that. Uh, I asked Doug because I like you. Sam, if you love worker IT, Ventoy is a must-have tool. Um, yeah, I don't even know what IT Ventoy is. So I don't, 
I've I've been working in IT and loving it for a long time without it. So <laughs> I don't think it's a must have, but I think you're just strongly recommending it because you like it. That's fine. Good day. How are you from Tigum? Uh, okay. G colon. Oh, good day. How are you from Tigum? So are you, Blackwatch, are you saying you're from Tigum? I'm aware that you're from Canada, I believe. Or is Sam from Tigum? Ken says hello. And Ken's been around for a long time too. So do I wait for somebody to ask to make him a moderator? Or do I just go make him a moderator? Ken's been around a long time. Um, Sam's in Melbourne, Australia. Lockdown 6.0, the sixth time that they're in lockdown. I guess that's what that means for COVID. Then a great attaboy to, oops, what happened? I just got scrolled too far because I hit my scroll wheel button, I guess. How far did I go? All right, you ran an ad mode. Oh, let's see, there's, um, what was it? Another comment that I was going to make regarding being moderator. Um, yeah, I don't remember what it was because I have such a sharp memory. Series S has no disk drive. Series X has a disk drive. wonder if you need the Xbox apps on Windows 10. Oh, Garrity Catherine, wonder if you need all the Xbox apps on Windows 10. Okay, well, that's our conversation. Uh, to be is saying Ventoy Sergey Strelik, ISO, wonderful tool. Look up on Google Brave Search how to install Xbox OS on a new drive. So that sounds like that's directed to you, Jason. Yeah, I've seen that. You've seen that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. antivirus blocked that ISO. Uh, Series S has. I uh, use EST, not blocking. Uh, blue, that was I. Windows 11 now on ISO from Microsoft. Cloud Ready. Sam, Cloud Ready. OS is Chrome OS, but no Google. Oh, really? Chrome OS, but Google, no Google Play services. Are you saying that if I install the Chrome OS, on these all-in-one PCs that I won't be able to get Google Play services or the Google Play Store games. What I'm after is games from the Google Play Store. Are you saying that if I put Chrome OS on these all-in-ones, that's not going to get me the Google Play Store games? That'll be a, a that'll be a roadblock right there. Should I ask Rashida back again to give Sam a run for his money? Ha 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 ha, there he's laughing. Just kidding. Yep, I understand you're just kidding. <laughs> Did you get my email? That's chit chat, chit chat. Put a link. I put yesterday a link to Microsoft. That would have been for Windows 11. So, caught up again. I'm going to make sure I've got this highlighted to keep my place. That's at 11.02 or 11.12 a.m. Well, we've been a bit over an hour here. Yeah, kind of ran over a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I had my, my um, I had told you when we started that I have a 11 o'clock obligation. That's actually to get ready for a 12 o'clock. And we, I, my 12 o'clock today is canceled. Um, but I'd like to get off, get, get off because I'm actually a little under the weather today. Uh, that's all good. I don't want to go so, too far. And we've had a good session here. Yeah, we covered quite a bit of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to try those few other things and see where I get on it. And right. hopefully that will do the trick and that will be added to my services. So, yeah. All right, so here I'm going to catch this last piece because this is something that I was asking for Sam. Only Google Play services on only officially licensed hardware from tools partners. So I'm thinking that he's answering my question that no, I will not be able to install Google Play Store games by installing 
the Chrome OS. Uh, Google not tools. I guess he's meaning Google partners instead of tools partners. Yeah, so, so I will look I will look deeper license. into that. I thank you, Sam. I think you may have just saved me a bunch of grief. I would have been very unhappy to go through the jump through the hoops of installing Chrome operating system on those and then find I can't install games. <laughs> uh Blackwatch is wanting to hang out for a while. I'll leave, I I think the chat keeps going for quite a while after I end the live stream. So yeah, you guys can keep talking back and forth if you want to. <laughs> All right. So Jason, thank you for another productive, yeah, informative, I think useful session for people who watch this. Yeah, it's definitely uh stays informative. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you'll go ahead and click your end button, I'm going to switch over and display my email address and say goodbye to everybody. Thank you, everyone, for being here. The email address there is for if you want to request a live stream session for whatever questions or issues or something you want to talk about, whatever it may be. I don't really offer free tech support by email. That's the Everything that I want to do is, is is I I want to be making videos out of it so that other people can benefit from that and that's why we do the the free stuff. Um, okay, so I hope that was useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.